The fierce challenge of Mount Marathon brings athletes of all ages together in the wilds of Alaska in pursuit of a single quest, finding the finish line. The adults will climb and then descend 3,000 vertical feet in less than a mile, at times facing grades above 60%. These brave souls aren't just racing for prize money, there isn't any. They run for pride, displayed as scrapes and bruises. And they run for bragging rights and the privilege to say they finish a race only a few hundred people a year get to attempt. Live from Seward, Alaska, it's the Men's Mount Marathon Race. Live on KTVA, GCI, Channel 907, and K... And welcome, everybody. July 4th in Seward, Alaska. And where else would we be? Mount Marathon. Good to have you with us and hope uh, you and your family enjoying this wonderful holiday. We're glad to be with you as well as the third and final leg of Mount Marathon getting going. Dave Goldman along with Clint McCool, our entire crew, here today in Seward for the 92nd running of Mount Marathon. Clint, uh, we've had some action already today. No race in the juniors, unfortunately, as the air quality was deemed unsafe. The ladies, a surprise winner in Hannah LaFleur, and now here we go as the gentlemen at the two o'clock hour taking off, ready to make their run up the Great Mountain. Yeah, it should be an exciting race today. The, the men are already underway. We've got uh, a very strong field. Those first two guys you see out there, that's Max King, a professional runner from out of state. And he's running with Lars Arneson, one of our local guys. And uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how things play out today. The former champion, two-time champion, uh, David Norris, uh, defending champion and record holder, has uh, made the determination not to race today due to the air quality and his professional career as a skier. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. Um, we have several, I'd say about four, very strong local contenders still. And on top of that, we have Max King, in second place last year, uh, a top-level professional. And I've, I know Max, and I can tell you that uh, last year he got second place. Um, and this year he's coming back out of his professional schedule all the way to Alaska for a race that doesn't have money, doesn't have any prize money at all. He's coming back for one reason, because he thinks he's going to take it away today. There's a guy who's driven. Yes, absolutely. All right, so as we uh, continue on here in our coverage with our uh, great crew up and down this mountain and in the truck and uh, throughout Seward, uh, we'll highlight some of the uh, interesting points along the mountain, some of the, what Clint says, are do's and don'ts, and you'll see a little of everything here and some of the favorites and contenders. And again, uh, just like we've seen in the women's race already today, we had uh, some surprises. Hannah LaFleur winning, not a tremendous surprise. Again, one of the top runners out there. Uh, hails from Nebraska, or from uh, New Hampshire, rather, and then now living in Seward. We're taking a look now at the second wave, which will be leaving. They always go five minutes afterwards to give those front runners a little chance to separate and ease up what'll be a traffic jam anyway on the mountain. But we had a number of ladies who did not participate today because of the smoke. And if uh, you're in Alaska, you know what I'm talking about. And if you're uh, tuning us in and, you, and you're not in the state of Alaska, it's been a rough year for wildfires for sure. And the Swan Lake Fire, which is uh, nearby, has uh, been uh, listing a lot of smoke, sending it our way. That uh, forced the uh, cancellation of the juniors race this morning. Okay, we're uh, seeing some developments already. Again, that's Max King, but now there's another out-of-state runner, a gentleman by the name of Ryan Phoebus, is trying to keep pace with him. Uh, and they're, they're uh, opening a little bit of gap on some of our local runners. Um, Brian is a, a, a top-level athlete from out of state, and I had a chance to talk with Max King um, just last evening, and he's raced against Brian Phoebus uh, earlier this year, and he said he's a, a serious contender, um, and I, we should keep our eyes on him. A long-distance guy, but uh, he can run the short stuff, too. Yep, he's a talented all-around runner. He does focus more on long-distance stuff uh, as a general rule, but uh, Max told me last night that he's, uh, he's definitely the real deal. Yeah, he's got a 50K and some of those on his resume as well. So, yep. you say, uh, knows what to do. This is a different story, though. Again, the smoke has been a, a big story today, although it's a little bit less now this afternoon than what it was this morning, although it wouldn't have made a difference. There were, what, 147 was the number you had at 1 o'clock, and you need to beat 100. That's what uh, obviously took care of the, the juniors race today, this morning. They did not want to do that, but... 
really had no choice. The officials didn't. And so a few of them, uh, the juniors, went up uh, up the mountain for just a nice little uh, Thursday morning, July 4th stroll. Came back down just to get the feel for it. And the ladies, was a Hannah LaFleur win. Uh, we, we know this much. It's hot today, and so with that, usually goes hand-in-hand. Hand. Unlikely to see records. Did not see a record with the women today, and not likely that we'll see a record today with the men as well, because there still is smoke, and the heat has been uh, pretty extreme. Yeah, I would say it, it's unlikely. However, uh, anything can happen. As we saw in the women's race earlier today, um, Hannah LaFleur had just an amazing downhill race come from behind. Uh, on a hot day like mm -hmm. this, she turned just an incredibly impressive time. Uh, so you never know. And to do it, and to do it with a veteran, Christy Marvin, in front of you, that says something. That's a two-time winner. Yeah, absolutely. It was it was impressive to see. Um, unexpected, but very impressive. Okay, here we have here we have Max King. He's uh, he's they've cleared the cliffs. Um, he's beginning to run on what we call the crossover trail, and uh, that's my route <laughs> as well. And um, we'll see how he's doing. Right now, he's he's moving very smoothly. He likes the front run if he can, and he's got the lead at the moment, and uh, I don't expect him to relinquish it easily. He's got the gloves you see in the back there. He knows what's coming. He's uh, already a veteran of this mountain and knows yep. there's plenty of shale there, and you're probably going to leave a little blood there if you don't wear the gloves. You'll probably leave blood anyway, even if you do wear the gloves. Yeah, for those. And a look at our second wave now getting going. They begin at 4th and Adams. Make that left turn, head for the hill, and then come back. Hopefully with a good experience for the, the firehouse. For those of you at home, uh, the race is split up into two waves because it uh, eliminates some of the bottleneck, some of the jam that happens when you get to the mountain and we suddenly have 300 individuals trying to cram into a trail that's only about three feet wide. So we do do two different waves. It also allows more people to, com to compete. All right, here's where it starts to get squirrely, too, and, and you really start to see the conditioning. Look, first look of all, look how, at the angle. Look at how steep that is. That's Lars Arneson and Luke Yeager, two of our local guys um, that I expect to be the, some of the top for our local runners. Um, and they're, you can see how hard they're working already. We are only six minutes into this race, and uh, they're work, they've worked up a sweat already. One long ago that Luke was in the juniors, and now look at him. Yep, he's, uh, I think he's 20 now. Uh, right there we have Ryan Phoebus. Um, the out-of-state runner that was running with, with uh, uh, Max just a few minutes ago, he's he's dropped back some, and that's due to his inexperience with the mountain. Mm -hmm. uh, Eric Strabel, uh, a multiple winner here at Mount Marathon, and uh, you can never count out Strabel. He's super strong, and he's got the fastest downhill on the mountain. Adam Jensen, a top five finisher last year. Matt Shyrock right behind him, and those those are also ones that I think are certainly going to be in our top 10 when it's all said and done. Some with baseball caps, some with not. Did you wear one? Never. <laughs> we got to uh, see the hair. Yeah, <laughs> just wasn't my style. Uh, but uh, some of the individuals, obviously, you can see. Uh, uh, speaking of uh, fashion and wardrobe, if you haven't noticed already, um, if you haven't noticed, there's a preponderance of pink shorts out there. Um, this is a salute to um, one of our local heroes in the race, if you will, um, Fred Moore. Uh, he's 79 years old, Hi, and he is completing his 50th consecutive Mount Marathon today. This is Christopher Kirk. Um, he's actually wearing a mic for us here today, so you'll be able to hear what the racers are hearing. Yeah, Craig Taylor <laughs> with the Mohawk. We had all kinds of characters out here today. He's a, he's a buddy of mine, and he's excited to be here. So glad you're with us as well for the 90-second running of Mount Marathon here on KTVA and all of our platforms. Terrific day for sure. Disappointed that the juniors did not get to run today. The decision made earlier this morning. And then the ladies running, the health, uh, the air quality, uh, not uh, where it should be. And so they made the call. It has improved, though, and, and hopefully that will uh, help the betterment of these runners as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the air is significantly better. There's Brad Benter, another local guy. Um, the, the air is considerably better than it was earlier. Uh, that being said, it's uh, it's still a little on the hazy side, and it's still going to have some effect on these racers, but it has improved. Um, unfortunately, the temperature has also gone up. <laughs> mm -hmm. As the air quality has gone down, or excuse me, improved, the um, temperature has also rose a, a couple, three degrees, and the, the gentlemen here are going to have to deal with that. 
So getting a good look here on the roots. John Thane is uh, chasing him down. And in some cases, letting them come to you. That's usually the easy way to do it, although he can get up and Yeah, John's in good shape. He was yeah. running right behind Max King there and staying up with him. <laughs> and another good look at that second wave coming to the hill and getting ready for what you saw that first group taking on right now. Yeah, for you folks at home, if you, if you don't know, if you're new to this, you'll notice that the racers are, are going two different directions. Uh, that's because there's two primary routes to get up onto the mountain. Um, there's what we call the roots, and then there's what we call the cliff. Um, and racers will practice both ways, and they'll decide which ones they like better. And that's why you'll see them right now. There's some kind of heading into the trees. That's the, the root route. And there's some kind of swinging wide, and they're going up the cliff. At the top of the cliff, the, the two routes converge. Um, but the interesting thing, one of the interesting things about this mountain is uh, there's no set route. So along that mountain, there are braids. Oh, Dave Urbisky, um, he's in his 70s and still going strong. But there are braids on the mountain where you get to choose which route you want to take. He does not move, sorry, he's not <laughs> moving like he's in his 70s. Yeah, he's, Look a, that. he's a strong, strong guy. Um, but in, when it comes to route finding on this mountain, it's one of the most interesting things about Mount Marathon is there's only two rules. You've got to start at the bottom at the start line. you got to climb the mountain, go around a rock, and come back down and finish at the saloon. That's a perfect, perfect. You see how right braided there. that that course was that they just showed us. Um, and which one you take is entirely up to you. You can find your own secret route if you want to. <laughs> there's the bird man, one of the colorful characters of Mount game. Marathon. You saw the movie. <laughs> um, a lot of characters here today. Birdman is definitely one of them. Um, but the tricky thing about this mountain is, is that you're rewarded by coming down and practicing and finding your own route. So veteran racers will come down and spend dozens and dozens of times going up and down the mountain to familiarize yourself with the routes and to create a sense of confidence. And when you know your route, when you know your steps, that's what you want. You never want to come to a section of the mountain and be like, uh, which way do I go? If you do that, you lose time rapidly. So racers will do this dozens and dozens of times. When I was racing, I would do 30 to 50 times before the race. Just, ah, speaking of Mr. Fred Moore right yeah. there. And we heard that Fred might do a little fashion switch. While everyone's got the pink, he's got the lime green. That's just like him to try to be a little different. Of course he is. <laughs> a step out for our first break is... The great one goes into the brush. <laughs> Just underway for the men's race, Mount Marathon, here in Seward, July 4th. Coming right back. The mountain invited them and they came. They said, come and get it. And here they are. It is Mount Marathon 2019 in Seward. 
They're still smiling, and that's a good sign with a high five, too. Dave Goldman, Clint McCool, Lauren Maxwell, our entire crew as they work their way through the brush up to the top. The men's race, the third race, the third event of the day. The juniors race called earlier today due to poor air quality. The ladies finishing up in the noon hour. And now it's the gentlemen. And very interesting because our winner last year, David Norris, deciding not to run due to that air quality. We spoke to him about 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon. He was close to saying yes. He said if the air quality is good, I'll go for it. The air quality obviously this morning was not and did not improve enough in time for him to decide. And he had uh, right up until race time to do so. Absolutely. Uh, uniquely, uh, since David was a former winner, he actually had right up until one minute before the race he could have changed his mind. But um, I spoke with him, and he's... He's just trying to be prudent with his professional skiing career. And uh, as much as I would have loved to see a rematch between uh, our defending champion and these couple of these out-of-staters, Max King in particular, um, I had to respect him for making the decision that he did. Which is, which is something that I think uh, a lot of folks may not uh, understand right away and say, well, why not just go for it? But again, this is not a race where there is prize money. You're not paying your rent to uh, run this thing. It's literally for the love of the sport and the love of getting up and down the mountain in one piece and in breaking a personal record. So you have to be thinking about the long-term future. And for a guy like David Norris or uh, so many others, that's where it was today. Yeah, uh, we mentioned this in the women's race, but I, I find there's a little bit of irony here that um, there's approximately about 200 racers, I was told, that have deferred uh, this year due to the air quality, uh, David Norris being one of them. Um, yet, contradictory, I was at the auction last night, so you can buy your way into this uh, race at times. And uh, there were seven spots for women and seven spots for men available. And uh, the women paid an average of about $1,200 to get into this race. The men paid an average of about $1,900 to get into this race. So for you spectators at home, for considering the 200 that decided not to run, mm -hmm. there was 14, <laughs> seven women and seven men that were willing to pay a great deal of money to be out here. Mm -hmm. uh, good point to, a good question here that a colleague of ours has been asking, and that is the issue of headgear. We mentioned hats and uh, ball caps. We've also seen some people with helmets. We see it on biking all the time. It's a must. It's a, you have to have it. Uh, we don't see too many people wear them, although those who have come back from severe injuries do wear them. Where's the stance on helmets, especially as you can see, one false move and you hit yourself the wrong way and you could be in some serious trouble. Yeah, you won't see many runners wearing the helmets. There's Max King breaking out of the trees and uh, he's charging, charging hard. So that's, a, that's an impressive sight. He's running right now. Um, all right, so Max King, as you said, and we'll get back to the helmets in just a moment, but, but you said Max King, a guy who likes to be in front. It's just the way he does. Better for him to set the pace and then have them chasing him. Yeah, he, he, he prefers to be in front if he can. I mean, that may sound like a, an obvious thing, but um, strategy does play a role in here, uh, especially depending on the strengths and weaknesses of the racer. Um, we're seeing the next few people after Max right now. Uh, that's Eric Strebel. I can tell by the way he moves. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, there's Max. He's just passed the halfway pole. Um, that's a halfway in terms of vertical ascent. It's not necessarily halfway in terms of time. Um, Max is going through there at a great time. He was uh, approximately like 1720 or so by my watch, um, having an excellent go. You can see he's already creating a substantial lead. There's uh, quite a few people kind of bunched up uh, for the rest of the top 10. But Max is definitely, uh, he's out to a super strong start. And, and he's, he, I knew going into this with David not racing that Max was the guy to beat. And uh, he's proving it right now. He's on fire. Yeah, Oregon, so this is a guy who's dealt with heat there. They certainly yep. get their, their share of it there. So this is not going to phase him. No, this is not going to phase Max. I, I talked to him just the last night. And he's been doing some training runs down here in the heat in his last few days. And, but for him, you know, running in 85 or 90 degrees is not at all unusual. So uh, he, he's not even being strained by this um, mid-70s temperature that we have. Well, again, mid-70s here is, is like the triple digits <laughs> on the East Coast or perhaps uh, on the West Coast as well. Yeah. This is about as hot as it gets for us here. But uh, for a lot of these runners who are used to it, yep. uh, business as usual in the summertime. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
But yeah, back to the uh, strategy we talked about before, you know, depending on the runner's strengths and weaknesses, you know, some people like to go, they know the climbing is their strength, and so they will push that aspect of the climb or the, of the race as much as possible because they know uh, on the flip side, maybe their downhill isn't quite as fast. Uh, so each runner has their strengths and weaknesses, and it plays into the strategic uh, race plan. How's the pace there? How's the form look? Uh, he, he's looking great. Um, he is relaxed. He's, uh, Max is built just perfectly for mountain running. He's, he's, not, he's not very tall, um, but he has very, very powerful legs. And uh, Max is quite the phenomenon. I, this is a guy who uh, went to the Olympic trials as a marathon runner, um, but the guy has also run a four-minute mile. Uh, you don't normally see guys that uh, can both run long and run short and fast. Yep. Um, so it, it's a little bit, it's an amazing combination. Uh, Max competes around the world in everything from 150-mile races to vertical Ks, which for those of people at home means a, a, a vertical K um, in terms of elevation gain, so about 3,400 feet of elevation gain. And Max is actually coming off of a, a big win at a sky race uh, just last month. He's in top form. You see a lot of the people on the trail, they know, they know where these runners are coming, the water and just a little dump and a little dunk right on there, and that's just, that's just all part of the whole spirit here. Uh, it's unofficial. It's not in the rule books. It's not expected. It's just something that's done. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's a tremendous support in the community. Uh, back there in the background, we're seeing Eric Strabel, and he's, he's looking strong to me right now as well. Um, wasn't expecting a super big race out of him. His, his wife, Denali, Old Agger Strabel, struggled in the, the race earlier this morning and uh, had a sprained ankle and, and unfortunately didn't have a great race. But uh, Stri Eric Strabel is looking pretty strong and has a multiple winner here. He knows the mountain great, and he's the fastest downhiller in the field. Yeah, that's the guy who, if, if anyone can, can, and I think we in years past you've said even 30, 40 seconds is something he can make up. After that, it's tough, but, but even in that 45 range, you, you might have a chance. Yeah, now Max is no slouch on the downhill himself, and I, I just spoke to the fact that you know, he, at one point, ran a four-minute mile. But uh, Eric Strabel is uh, renowned, <laughs> shall we say, for his, this, his speed on the downhill. All right, we got and some uh, one of the one of the one or two fastest uh, ever in the race. And look at that great shot there from uh, one of our drones, as you can see. Yeah. Yep. An opportunity to see just uh, um, how difficult it is in the spread out of this terrific Mount Marathon course, which again is no official course. Yep. You know, that's a great shot right there for you folks at home to see just how rugged this mountain is. The, there's, there are lots of places on the, on the mountain race course where there really isn't even a trail. And veterans yeah, like myself, when we would come down and train, we would sometimes figure our own trail out. You know, we've been, I've been known to, to create my own steps by you know, stacking up rocks. <laughs> and um, Max is making it look easy, but I can guarantee you at home it isn't. We can look at that pitch. And you may think he's just walking, but this is a world, world-class athlete, and he's giving it his all. The 34-degree incline. Think Aver about that. Average 34 degrees. There's places on the mountain where it approaches 60 degrees. Yeah, Max. Extraordinary. Yeah, Max is really pushing it. He's He just continues to gap the field. I don't see anybody uh, gaining on him at all at this point. You had a feeling this was the guy to beat. Now, again, we saw in the uh, opener today where Christy Marvin looked very, very strong and Hannah LaFleur came back uh, right after the top and then took it away from her and there she was. But again, Max King's a guy as well who once he gets that lead, look out because he's a good front runner. Yeah, again, I, I already said it, but, but Max, again, is a, is a professional and, and he came to Alaska for a race that has no prize money because last year he got second. He must have <laughs> known something. And that didn't sit well with him. There's Lars Arneson. Um, one of the top local guys. And again, Strabel's hanging right behind him, which is a little bit surprising. Strabel's uh, looking strong. There have been years where Eric came in, expected to be right there, and came back. This is a year where he yep. came in under the cover a little bit more, and, yeah. and look at the runs he's having. In our, in our uh, races so far this season, um, Eric ha hasn't had his, his standout race yet this year, uh, but it, maybe it's today. Uh, maybe he's looking for a little... Uh, a little redemption um, after his wife, unfortunately, didn't quite have the race that she was mm -hmm. looking for today due to injuring herself. Um, another great shot of, of Max King there, and you can see that he is opening, he's increasing the gap. 
But ladies and gentlemen, look at home, at, at home on that shot where you can see how varied the trail is. You see multiple trails, and you're allowed to go wherever you think is going to be fastest. And uh, you'll see racers going in various different directions. I used to spend hours and hours finding my own particular little way uh, because I felt like it gave me a small advantage. And even these runners in top shape. Listen to them work hard. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah. And the other night, took a run up there, and there was a breeze. It was windy, and it actually at one point got cold. Here, we're not getting quite that same wind today, and in this heat, you're just looking for any breeze, aren't you? Yeah. Any, anything. Oh, absolutely. Uh, there's Alan Spangler going by us right now. He's a, one of, an, an amazing long distance. Eric Johnson as well. Um, and there's Matt Shyrock, as we mentioned earlier. He was a top 10 finisher last year. Eric Johnson's also uh, finished uh, high in this race, too. Yeah, Eric Johnson uh, had, had a win here just a few years ago. And um, there's Strabel, and he's getting into that little run, which I'm impressed to see. That's uh, uh, if, if you can run in some of these pitches, uh, it'll, it'll behoove you. But it's not easy to do, I can tell you from, from first-hand experience. <laughs> And there's, there's what you're referring to before. Yeah, yeah. you can see from that camera angle just how many different trails there are, and you can be left, you can be right. Ladies and gentlemen, you're also allowed to cut off all those little corners, all those switchbacks you see. You're, you're allowed to cut them all off. But the rule, I mean, the, uh, the general rule on Mount Marathon, when you're in this, in this section of the mountain, straight line is good, solid footing is better. So that's why you'll sometimes see the people on the trail, even though it seems like it'd be shorter to take a, to cut those corners off, the rock is very loose. So once you get off into the loose rock, you can actually expend a great deal of energy and not make much progress. It's like trying to run in gravel. And now you can see, and a, and a good shot here, but in years past, to give you an idea of the background, if you've uh, tuned in with us before, that's a blue, that's an aqua blue behind them, and it's not that way today with an air quality of 147, which is a lot higher than it should be. Mac, an optimum would be around 100, and uh, we're higher than that today. But these runners who are able to deal with the heat are now dealing with the smoke, and that does play in, and, and to some more than others, depending on perhaps where they come from. But, of course, let's keep in mind, too, that in other parts of the country and the world, they will run... Uh, races with poor air, poor pollution. Beijing, for instance, New Delhi have uh, run marathons with uh, just awful smog. People running actually with masks on. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Um, we've had a little uh, change in the uh, action there. Eric Strabel has now passed Lars Arneson in, to go into second place. Um, he's uh, that's a strong move uh, in this sec this particular point in the race. Again, there's uh, Max King, and you can you can see just uh, the gap that he's put on them. But he look, he's looking over his shoulder because he, he knows that uh, Eric is a tremendous downhiller. So he's not going to take anything for granted. Um, Max is quite accomplished downhiller himself. But when you're going up against the guy who's got the record for the downhill, you, have to keep in, you always have to keep your eyes on him. And you can see the way the shoes were. And then he's got uh, some support around the ankles and a little further higher up. He knows that uh, you're still going to get nicked up on the shale. There it is. You can see mid-shin. Yep. Yeah, he's got some uh, some little guards to keep the gravel out of your shoes. You'll see a few runners do that. Um, not all of us, but um, Max likes to do it. Um, if we ever get a shot of uh, Eric Strabel's feet, you'll notice that he wears um, br ankle braces on both of his feet, ultra lightweight racing braces. And here you really have to earn it, this, this little extra bit before you get up to the top. Yeah, too. Uh, you know, Max is just looking remarkably strong. Uh, to be running in that section is... is Really impressive. What kind of training does it take to be able to do this on race day? Uh, doing this a lot. <laughs> over and over again. And pushing yourself until you taste copper in the back of your throat. Um, and you start to get tunnel vision. And, and then you right keep on going. Now there are the great shots, as you can see. Lots of ways to get up this mountain. And lots to get down there. Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully on two feet, though. <laughs> yeah. Knowledge of the mountain means a great deal uh, because there is no specified uh, line that you have to maintain. Um, every little place where you can save a step, yep, there's Strabel's feet. If you can look closely, you'll see the, 
the ankle guards. That he, they're, they're not ankle guards, they're ankle braces. Eric does that for a particular reason. There's, there's another reason why he's the, he's the fastest downhill guy because he hits the ground so hard. He's got very powerful legs. And he hits the ground so hard that he just kicks up rocks. And for him, the extra trade-off of having a little more weight on his feet in terms of the weight of the brace is a trade-off he's willing to make because it allows him to run downhill harder with more confidence that he's not gonna roll an ankle. So that's what the braces are for. Not everybody does it. In fact, you'll see that Max doesn't. But Strabel, um, I've talked to him many times about it. He's convinced um, that it absolutely is worth the trade-off for a little extra weight in order to have that ability to run down with no fear of rolling your ankle. 350 men, 350 women, 150 boys, and 150 girls. This race is capped at 1,000, and they're banging down the door to get into it. Yeah. Absolutely. Some people, as I said, are willing to pay 1900 bucks to be here today. Um, and for you folks at home, that's not even a record. We've had over $3,000 paid in order for uh, some of the men to participate. You'll notice Ma that Max is putting on his gloves now because he's nearing the top. Um, he's got a great pace going. Um, I'm looking at his splits, and he's just got an amazing pace going. But he, you'll notice he's putting on his gloves because on the way down, it's... Even for the best of the best, it's so easy to take a fall. And this shale that they're running on, I can tell you, it will just peel the skin off of your hands, knees, elbows, whatever whatever you let hit. So that's why you'll see a lot of the guys, uh, all the ra racers, men and women, many of them will carry a pair of lightweight little gloves, oftentimes tucked into the back of your shorts and then you pull, the, pull him out and put him on just at the last minute. You think he's looking at his times, he's got the watch on there to see what he's doing to know, or is it not even, not even a focus now, it's just stay in front? Well, it's both. Uh, Max is feeling strong, and I mean, there's no question in my mind that uh, he would, you know, would consider going for a record. Um, in order to do so, he's a little off record pace, mm -hmm. We're given the, the, the heat is not at all, yeah. um, it's not at all yeah. under, not understandable, but he's, uh, he's going for it. Um, again, he doesn't want to take any chances that Strabel might be close enough to strike back at him. So win priority number one, record priority number two. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at his splits right now. It's, it's okay. This will give you a good idea of the lead that he's opened up and what he'll have to protect on the way down. There he goes, he's, he's nearing the lip of the mountain. And I got him unofficially at uh, almost 32 minutes. Right. His last year time was 32.04 to the rock. Which so means he'll really need to motor downhill to get it. Yeah, he's gonna be just a little slower than he was last year on this split, but he's guys, got a, a huge lead way, that uh, be right there. should be you know, should be, you should say should, because anything can happen on this hill on the way down. It's so easy to roll an ankle, um, trip, um, or start to cramp, which is also uh, a very, very legitimate and, and common uh, problem for the racers to have, especially on a hot day like this. If you like heights, don't run this race. <laughs> there you go, you can see him uh, now going down through the shale and it's not as easy as it looks. That's a those are just that's a twisted ankle just waiting to happen, and Max is making it look pretty easy. That's it's a controlled good. fall, as you like to say, huh? Yeah, it's a controlled fall. He even navigated. Uh, there was a, a spot there earlier that we saw the the first two women crashed in the same spot. Max just made it through clean. Someone's behind him too with a camera. <laughs> I don't know who that is. That's not our good friend John Thompson from Daybreak. I don't think it's yeah. somebody just like him. Or not. I would be. I'd be pretty uh, pretty sure that that's Max Maroney, um, who's uh, done a documentary film on this race before. And there he goes. Yep, he's moving. He's moving really well. That the rock right there right now is super chunky. It's what we call chunky. Okay, there's uh, Eric Strabel approaching the top of the mountain with Lars Arneson right behind him. This could play out to be something interesting. Now, again, Eric is the faster downhiller typically, but Lars is no slouch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and 
when then they get when they hit the road, then you know they, they still have to battle for another 0.7 miles on yeah, the road. Yeah, that's true. And uh, King is moving right now and is yeah. is showing no signs of fatigue or wear. No, he's he's not. But uh, Strabel is going around the rock at about 33:50 by my clock, more or less. And uh, that's a really strong time for him. You'll notice that he stopped long enough to grab a cup of water and pour it over his head. That's to give him a moment to clear his head and to get his, his awareness about him because you want a clear head when you're coming down, um, even for just a second, just to throw some cool water over yourself because you need to have quick feet. On the way up, you've been you know, using certain muscle groups. Now, all of a sudden, you got to look at how fast his feet have to go in order to, to keep him moving and not take a tumble. Planned trail for him, planned trek here, the way he's going down? Yeah, um, I, I don't sure that that was actually a good choice on him and Lars's part, but you know, you never, each racer has to find their own way. You saw Max taking a different line that, from my scouting reports, was the faster one. But, uh, you know, never going to second guess Eric Strabel. Right. He, knows, he knows this mountain and he knows what's fastest for him. It seems when you're watching this race that this spot, and of course we saw in the uh, earlier race with Hannah winning today, uh, Hannah LaFleur, yep. uh, that that spot right afterwards many times is a deciding factor that that one little which way you're going down the shale and that, that seems to really set yeah, the pace it can make a it can make or break your race if you take a, a poor if you make a poor choice and again this looks easy but the so that's the Kenny. angle is just brutal yeah that's uh, that's Kenny Brewer right there that's uh, just came into our screen number nine um, He's, he chose a different line. He followed uh, the same way that, that Strabel went. Uh, there was another runner just off to the other side. We'll <laughs> see how they come out, if they come out together or not. And if you're thinking that snow looks like fun to slide on, think again. Not the best way. There's plenty of rock and shale right under there. And obviously with our heat, not a lot of that to be found. Okay, there's Luke Yeager right there. Um, a young runner. I think he's, Luke's only about 22 or 23. And uh, he's wearing a pink bandana in, in Fred Moore's honor. Um, he's, he's looking like he's a little worn out. You can look, look, take a look, look on his face, his expression, the way his arms are kind of moving, that uh, he's still getting his head clear. We saw, yeah, we saw the high body posture earlier for some of the ladies, and that you said that, that means a little tired. Yeah, right? that, that, that's a shot, sure sign of fatigue. So there's Eric Strabel and Lars again that they just showed. You can see that, that Eric has put a gap on Lars. Um, because of his strength in the downhill. Now, whether it be enough to, to reel in Max King, I don't know. Um, and again, when we when Max hits the, the road, that four-minute mile speed of his comes into play. Yeah, that's the thing. You think, well, wh where is the weakness with a guy like Max King? He was strong up, he's strong on this downhill, and then you get him on the road, and there are a few guys who are going to be as good as him there. Absolutely. I mean, Max is the complete package. Last year, when he was racing against David Norris, David Norris was able to maintain the win. There's Matt Shyrock navigating that really difficult spot. That's where we saw some of the ladies going down earlier today. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing about Max King is he's got the complete package. He's got the uphill strength. He's got this road speed. Um, and he's got the experience. He's a, I believe Max is about 38 or so, and he travels around the world racing mountain races all over the world. And given his performance last year, really speaks to the brilliance of the performance from David Norris to be able to What's beat up, King bud? because he really was terrific. Absolutely. Uh, David Norris managed to hold Max off, but that's just because he had enough of a lead. And last year was a snow year, if you mm -hmm. recall. Uh, that snow saved David Norris last year. He was able to recover, regroup, regroup himself uh, on the snow slide, and that was enough for him to hold Max off. But Max was gaining, gaining on him at the end last year. So, again, a testament to, to uh, Max King's road speed. The oldest mountain race in the United States. You're watching it right now, folks, and we're glad to have you with us here on KTVA and all of our platforms. Wherever you are in the state of Alaska, the United States, or around the world, Dave Goldman along with Clint McCool, Lauren Maxwell, our producer and director, Shirley Young, Jim Philly keeping us on the air, and the entire crew up and down this mountain. July 4th, Mount Marathon, the 92nd running of this great Alaskan tradition. That's Ben Marvin you see going past another racer right there. And it's, again, it demonstrates, look at how, how much he's gapping the person that he just passed. Yeah, terrific shot there. Look at the angle. 
and the slope, and they're going through shale and rock. All right. Yep, there's Max King. He's just getting down to the, sec at the bottom of the section we call the gut. So he just ran down through a creek, a creek with running water. And you have to navigate this creek for about four minutes running as fast as you can over these algae-covered rocks with water running through it at the same time. So he's, he's just about to hit the cliff, um, the top of the cliff, and he'll make his descent from there, and he'll be on the road in just a matter of probably about 30 seconds. But this cliff is exactly that, ladies and gentlemen. It is vertical, and you have to be very, very careful. It's super easy to, to hurt yourself. He looked comfortable going through that, and that is, and that's not easy to traverse. No, it's not. He actually missed a little turn there that he should have made. But um, yeah, who am I to quibble with a guy who's, who's running away with the race? <laughs> well, you weren't surprised that you felt, especially if David Norris did not run, or even if David Norris did run, that Max King was the guy, and perhaps even if David did, Max would be the favorite today. One A, one and one A, perhaps. Yeah. I, I would, I would say that. I mean, I just know that. Max didn't come up here to get second place again. <laughs> he's one of the greats in the game right now. And he is. Well, a little style, uh, too. He's having a little fun. He skied down the rock. That's the, uh, that's the glory rock, we call it, because people, you stop there sometimes, take a little bow. But uh, no, Max is, is ripping, and now he's on the pavement, and no one's going to catch him. And you can see he is, he is really in charge. Sometimes those legs feel like jelly. I, I don't think so. He, he look just at, looks solid. Look at his leg turnover. I mean, I, I don't think I could keep up with him for 100 yards at that base. <laughs> I think our officer better step on it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that police car might want to speed up just a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Max is going to set the pace. Oh, yeah. There's Eric Strabel. There's your number two coming down. He's had a terrific race. He has. I mean, Eric hasn't had his pop-out race yet this year, but this looks like it to me. And he looks very comfortable. So here's the turn that he's going to take that Max King didn't. There's a little shortcut right there underneath that tree. Yeah. And uh, because Eric is so experienced on this mountain, he knew to take that. And here comes Max King running down the road. Lars Arnson in, number in, play, excuse me, in third place. Um, and he's going to come on down looking very comfortably as well. Uh, he also didn't take the slide under the tree. Again, it just speaks to experience on the mountain. Yeah, it's the three really strong performances today. Guys who have gotten up and down the hill and, and look really good, too. All right, there's, uh, there's Eric Strabel uh, just about to hit the pavement. He looks smooth. He looks in control. There's no... He's running hard, but he, he, you can look at his face. He's not strained. He's not uh, out of control. This has got to be a performance he's been very happy with. Absolutely. It's the best race that Eric's had this year. And no shame to lose to a guy, or lose to a come, come no. in second, we'll call it. Yeah. There's, there's no losing <laughs> here. No but losing. come in second to a guy like Max King, who, who clearly was the best today. Yeah, to come in second to one of the best in the world is uh, you know, not a bad day's work. Lars Arneson about to hit the rock, the pavement as well. Um, he's looking comfortable, but unless uh, Eric was to cramp up, I think uh, Eric's got second place pretty well in hand. Well, this one really went to form the way Max King would plan it. Wanted to get out in front and stay there. Absolutely. And he's going to be a wire-to-wire -wire guy. Absolutely. He's going to turn in a really strong performance given the heat and the smoke and everything today. He's a little off of his time from last year, but... He's going to win very comfortably. And given the conditions, impressive too. Absolutely. The heat and the smoke. If you're just joining us, happy to have you with us on this July 4th. You're watching the leader and the gentleman who's going to take it home, Max King. Last year second. This year, he's going to close the deal. Absolutely. He's going to take it all the way. He, he led wire to wire. I know David Norris will be the first one to congratulate him, but I also know David well enough to know that he, he can see himself out on that road with him right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a tough decision for him to make, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, you got to do what's best for you. Which is the interesting point, because this is what Max does for a living. David is hoping to do some other things for a living. Yeah, and, and you also have to look at in the position in their careers. I mean, Max is nearly 40, and, and Eric is uh, 25 or so. And, He's hoping for Olympics still in front of him and things like that. All right. In 2019, Max is 
king. <laughs> Very much so. And he looks good. He's not, uh, he's not even stumbling across the line. What's our unofficial there? Close to it unofficial, there. I got about 43, 38, 43, 40, but that's an unofficial time, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Here comes Eric Strabel running down, about to turn the corner. Lars Arneson behind him. Both of them are running comfortably. Lars isn't going to really try to catch him at this point, and Eric's not going to let him. Mm -mm. <laughs> You know, it's good to see Eric Strabel, too, to come back up there and jump. He had a couple of years where he had some races yeah. that I think he was disappointed, and you even felt it was surprised. And here he is Absolutely. with a really strong second-place finish. Yep, it's really great to see Eric back in, in top form and, and just pop off his, his best race of the year on his favorite race of the year. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, uh, it's just great to see him back out there. Uh, they're coming down Main Street. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a great feeling, I can tell you. Um, people are cheering, they're calling your name. For those of you who don't know, that this is the most, this is the largest spectated sporting event in the state of Alaska. There are typically about 30,000 people who come to Seward just to watch this race, to celebrate 4th of July as well. But the race is uh, sort of the, the centerpiece of this July, the 4th of July celebration here. So you've got Eric Strabel and Lars Arneson uh, both finishing very strongly, second and third to one of the all-time best in the world right now. You can see how happy Eric is to, to have a, a really top-notch race again. And a solid third place. Win, place, show. Three stars, three studs in the, in the world of mountain running, and boy, were they terrific today. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, Lars has got to be happy with that. Yeah. All right, we'll step out, take a break. These guys aren't even breathing heavy. Max King, your winner, 2019, and we will hear from him after the break. And welcome back, everybody. Mount Marathon 2019, the men's race. We have a winner, a dominant performance by Max King. Last year second, this year he's first, and he's with our Lauren Maxwell at the finish line. Lauren. Right. And next, I'm going to touch you for a moment. I'm Lauren, and I'm with from St. Louis. Congratulations. Thank you very much. That was that was awesome and amazing. So. Yeah, tell me a little bit. How was this race for you? Um, it was great. I mean, it started out fast, just like last year, um, and I just I took it out hard. Kind of like last year, just hoping to kind of get a gap on everybody, uh, make everybody hurt a little bit early, and then, you know, get up the cliff and just start hammering as hard as we can. And it's hot again like it was last year, so I knew it was going to be a struggle for everybody out there. And uh, So just tried to push my way to the top and then hold on to the downhill today. 
What about conditions? People were so concerned about the heat, the smoke. How did that affect you? Um, you know, like, I don't know. I guess I love, I love the heat, and so that to me feels really good uh, that it's hot. Um, as long as you kind of, like, monitor yourself and stuff, it's okay. Obviously, the smoke's not ideal for anybody out here, and that kind of affects you. And more long-term than anything, you know, that's the one thing that people were worried about today is just doing the race and being out here on the smoke and what that's going to do to your health. And, you know, from living in Bend, Oregon, like we've had smoke the last couple of summers, and I can tell you, like, half you breathe it for a little while, it does affect you. Yeah, you had that training advantage, I think. <laughs> I don't know if that's an advantage or a disadvantage, but... It's got to feel good coming in from second to first. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, it was my whole goal coming in last year, and uh, it's been a goal of mine for a long time to do this race, and then last year it was just a gift to be able to do it, and then this year to come back and win, that's, uh, that's amazing. Okay. I want to say congratulations to you. Thanks a lot. Dave, we're going to take it back to you. Lauren, thanks very much. Max King, our winner, as they continue to run in. Everyone's a winner today at Mount Marathon. We'll step out for another break and come back and hear from more of our winners here in Seward. And welcome back, everybody. Mount Marathon 2019, Max King, the men's winner, joining Hannah LaFleur, the ladies' champ this year. And some just trying to negotiate that shale, Clint. <laughs> you, you know, in C2, we were looking for a little bit of blue. I think that punctuates it there because about 20 minutes ago, that was gray. And now we're starting to see a little bit of clearing, a little bit of blue. Hence the, the better air quality. Unfortunately, we didn't have that this morning, but at least we're seeing that for the finish of the men's race today. Yeah, absolutely. It, it has seemed to be improving all day. In the meantime, let's go back down to the finish line. Lauren Maxwell, once again. Yeah, and we're here with Eric Strabel. We want to say congratulations to you. A big jump from last year. Yeah, well, I didn't even make it to the starting line last year. Um, I was out, and the year before that, things didn't work out. The year before that, Things were pretty good, so it's been a real difficult comeback to, to where I, I like to feel good going hard, and uh, finally it feels like it's coming back, so it feels, feels amazing. What did you do that's so different? Because this has got to be one of the toughest years to compete, and to come in second is pretty amazing. Came back to consistency. You know, last September, uh, I had to come back from an injury, and I just had to go back to consistency less than an hour every day. I would not let myself go away for months. And, and how many times did you climb this mountain? Twice. Just twice? One, one day I came down. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's impressive. But I've been down it hundreds of times in my whole life. So it's like yeah. the old friend. So this is definitely your best race of the year, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, that's my best race. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to tell us about just kind of what went on up there? 
uh, it was hot. Um, it's uh, you, you know the, the results aside, it's amazing just sharing company with uh, with a crop of phenomenal men up there bumping elbows and um, just working hard, giving our best, and that's what it's all about. Well, a lot of people proud of you today, and I want to say congratulations again. Thank you very much. Okay. Back to you, Dave. Lauren, thanks very much. Nice to see that, Eric Strabel. And you can see it's it's been a bumpy few years. This is a former champion out of the top 10. You know, you almost think it's a misprint when you don't see Eric Strabel in there. You go, what happened? Where Did they miss something? No, it, he went through one of those periods, and it happens even to the greats. And to have the performance that he did today, as Lauren said, in this heat, with the smoke, and really looked great from start to finish, is terrific. Absolutely, it's, just, it's really uh, just great to see him back up into form. Uh, keep in mind that uh, it was just a few years ago that Eric was the first one to break the Mount Marathon record that had stood for, I want to say, about 35 years. Eric set himself a goal, and he worked extremely hard specifically to break that record, and he managed to do it. Uh, and it wasn't until a, a guy by the name of Killian Jornet, mm -hmm. who was the number one ranked mountain runner in the world, came to Seward and was able to break Strabel's record. Um, so for him to be, you know, having a, a couple of years where he really wasn't at the top of his game, and for him to come back today and have such a strong performance from wire to wire, you saw the expression on his face when he came across the line. He's just thrilled. It's back down once more. Let's keep Lauren busy. He's got the third place finisher. That's and Lars Arneson. Yes, Lars Arneson is here. We want to say congratulations to you. Not a bad way to go, number three. How was this race for you? It was great. Uh, it started out, it was a little warm. Um, Eric caught me on that pill and just tried to hang on the rest of the race. How did you feel with the heat and the smoke is the question everybody's asking. Did it yeah, slow you down at all? I didn't really notice the smoke. Uh, yeah, I, didn't, I don't love the heat, but I tried to enjoy it this year instead of uh, hating it. <laughs> What was the toughest part, would you say, most challenging? Uh, holding it together on the downhill. My legs were toasted after the climb and just tried to stay on my feet the way down. And we heard there were some pretty bad sort of dust storms being kicked up by everybody. Did you come into any of that? Yeah, Eric was ahead of me. He was kicking up a bunch of dust. I gave him a little bit of room, but fortunately that, that let him sneak away from me. I could, couldn't catch him on the downhill. Well, you have a lot to be proud of as well. Anything yeah. else you'd like to tell us about this? No, it was just a great experience. A lot of the race. Hope to do it again next year. Yeah, and a lot of love from the crowd, too. That's oh, yeah. always yeah, nice. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah, a lot of fun. All right. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right. Back to you guys. Okay, Lauren. You mentioned Killian Journey a few years ago, and I remember it was that lull where he came in, stole a little bit of the Alaskan thunder, and it seemed to recharge and re-energize everybody a little bit more to up the game. I agree. Um, when Killian came here, it was a pleasure to watch the number one and arguably one of the very top uh, women as well that year, Emily Forsberg, mm -hmm. came into town and they both broke the records, existing records. Emily still holds, but our own David Norris, you see Harlow Robinson finishing strong, but our own David Norris was, uh, I think there's a certain amount of Alaskan pride and, and he, uh, had never run Mount Marathon before, and he said, you know what, I'm gonna bring this back home. And he ended up breaking Killian Jornet's record. I remember when we were doing the broadcast that day that um, when he crossed the finish line, I said, hey, Killian, I think you've been invited back to Alaska. And today it wasn't Killian, but it was Max King. And I'm sure out there somewhere, Killian is watching this. Killian, come back. Got some Alaskans who wanna Race with you again. Enjoyed it once again, partner. Thank you. Oh, thank you. It was a great time. So that's going to do it. Mount Marathon 2019. It's a wrap. Glad you're with us on this July 4th as Max King wins it. Hannah LaFleur takes the women's race. And for the entire crew, up and down the mountain, in the trees, in the bushes, the shale, you name it, in town. Our producer director, Shirley Young, Jim Philly, our engineer, Lauren Maxwell. At the finish line, my partner Clint McCool, I'm Dave Goldman. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Happy July 4th. Happy July 4th. From Seward. <laughs> Happy Independence Day, everyone. <laughs>